Good morning and welcome back to the book of Exodus today, the last portion of uh, chapter 38. We're looking at verses 21 to 31, and again, there's a number of verses there. I'm not going to read them all. I invite you to read them. Let's read some of the verses starting at verse 21. This is the number of the things for the tabernacle, the tabernacle of the testimony, as they were numbered according to the command of Moses for the service of the Levites by the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Now Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, the, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord had commanded Moses. With him was Oholiab, the son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a skillful workman, and a weaver in blue and in purple and in scarlet material and fine linen. Verse 24, all the gold that was used for the work in all the work of the sanctuary, even the gold of the weave, wave offering was 29 talents and 730 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. And it goes on to talk about how much silver and how much how much of this, how many of those, how much of that. The focus here is, a lot of the focus here is on the metals, the precious metals, which is carrying a lot of the uh, value, I guess you would say, uh, of the sanctuary in those, at least in those monetary terms. So why this section then about the uh, the amount of coins and the amount of the cost, how much gold, why that why, why that focus and that emphasis? I have a little note here from Stewart's commentary that I uh, I, uh, I wrote out. Here Moses introduced a new term combination. This is yet another way Moses made sure his audience understood that the tabernacle was not the housing for an idol or for the actual presence of a god, but was the housing for a symbol of the only God, Yahweh, and his means of grace for his people and his covenant. That's page 770 from Stewart's commentary. So again, the way that it's described, and you can read on through, and there's different terms now that Moses puts in a couple more terms. Uh, for the sanctuary, he's calling it these little phrases with two or three words, and uh, in, but the, he seems to be using that to help people recognize and not make a mistake. This is not uh, housing God. This is housing it's a representation of God. You know there is there is a difference between a representation. Uh, so this is going to be different, distinctly different. God, the one and only God, the monotheistic God, very different from the other, the way the other idols and things were worshipped in those days. So Moses uses different terminology in different places to sort of lay that out. One of the words used here is abika, abeka, and that means to split something, you know, it means a partial item. Another thing here is if we were to read the whole thing through, you'd find what? They're making a record here of the, the coinage, right? The silver and the gold and so on that's used. And this sort of points, I uh, would just point you to the work of your local church treasurer. Almost certainly if you're part of a church congregation, uh, there's some individual in your congregation who has been, uh, to the congregation believes was called to serve as a treasurer for the church. So yes, there's monies that need to be handled and sorted out and things need to be put in the bank and kept in, kept in certain funds. You know, you're going to re rebuild this or buy a new furnace or uh, re-roof the place or pave the parking lot or you have to get this or get that. So there's there's expenses that are involved in, you know, making a, a positive worship space for a group of people. And you know, you have your church treasurer. A lot of times the church treasurer is, an, is neglected uh, people don't realize the amount of work. The church treasurer does an enormous amount of work. And it has to be a person who's honest. It has to be a person who's willing, willing to work with detail. It has to be a person who uh, can put things in order. It has to be a very orderly person. This chapter, yeah, this portion of this chapter in the book of Exodus is actually, to my mind, it's, it's suggesting the value, the importance, the, uh, the great blessing you have as a church when you have godly, a godly person or persons who are serving in terms of the church treasurer. So uh, it's important sometimes to keep exact figures, exact amounts, how much has been spent on this, how much is going to be spent on that, so that we're good stewards of those things that God has entrusted to us. Here we have that record actually, a church treasurer kind of a record with reference in a sense to the building of the sanctuary. So it's kind of an interesting thought to have. Uh, there are many people serving, no doubt, in your church, church officers, in your congregation. Among them, your church treasurer uh, should be a person that uh, you respect and you make their work easier if you're able and uh, be an example to them because I'll tell you what, in the church, 
the treasure the treasurer knows he's she he or she is probably the one single person who knows who's giving and who isn't who who is following the biblical counsel and is being a steward towards the local church congregation and and who is sort of a free rider there's just kind of coming along and maybe you're getting the benefits, the loaves and fishes, but maybe you're not contributing to the mission in your local church congregation. Uh, that's not good. Let's pull things together. Let's make sure that we uphold our part. The Hebrews did. They gave and gave and gave. And so uh, be thankful for your church officers, including, friend, your church treasurer. Okay, we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.